Welcome to worship here at St. Philip Lutheran Church. We are uh, still celebrating the, the Sundays after, after Pentecost. And today's um, sermon is entitled, Prisoners of Hope. Well, we begin our, our service this, this uh, morning by singing our opening hymn. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins. Turn to me and be saved, says the Lord, for I am God and there is no other. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a moment for self examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have lived for ourselves, denied our relationship with you, excluded ourselves from the family. We are helpless and alone. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and renew us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now the absolution. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart, and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We turn to God's word. Our first reading comes to us from Zechariah chapter 9, beginning with the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. He is humble and mounted on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. 
and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes to us from Romans chapter 7, beginning with the 14th verse. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin who dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel reading comes to us from Matthew chapter 11, beginning with the 25th verse. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
sermon for today is from the Old Testament reading from Zechariah, and I read again verses 11 and 12. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoner of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is our text. Do you notice the great par paradox in this uh, title of the sermon, which comes straight from our text? Prisoners of hope. The phrase can either be taken in a negative way or in a positive way. The, the uh, definition of paradox is a true statement which seems to contradict itself. There are a lot of examples of this all around. You must be cruel to be kind, says Shakespeare. All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. George Orwell in Animal Farm. You can save money by spending it. I know one thing that I know nothing. This is the beginning of the end. Deep down, you're really shallow. I'm a compulsive liar. Men work together whether they work together or apart. From Robert Frost. What a pity that youth must be wasted on the young. From George Bernard Shaw. I can resist anything but temptation. Oscar Wilde. Well, in honor of the 4th of July, which we celebrated just a few days ago, though not a paradox, but instead a rhetorical device, it works the same way. Give me liberty or give me death by Patrick Henry. We are prisoners of hope as we are set free by the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is a paradox. While I was in, in Oslo several years ago, I noticed a great paradox in the ancient Akerhus Castle. It was in a large wing of the castle that I went to the basement on the tour and saw the prison. The cells were dark, horrible rooms. The floors were slanted at about 45 degrees in order to allow the human waste to flow down to the lower end. I could not imagine spending even one day as a prisoner in such a place, let alone years as, as some must have. But the paradox was right above the dungeon was the castle cathedral. It was wonderfully ornate with a, ma a magnificent pipe organ. You had to wonder what the prisoners must have thought as they heard the sounds of the organ drifting down into the dungeon steps. Or what did the worshipers think as they heard the moans and cries of the prisoners below? Let's say it this way. We are prisoners of humanity. In Zechariah, the people for which Zechariah was writing had just been released from the captivity in Babylon. They were not prisoners to some foreign nation anymore. Instead, they were prisoners to their own frustrations and sorrow. They faced the awesome job of having to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, which had totally been destroyed. They had no king. They had no temple. They had no bright light in the future. They were prisoners of their own doing. Each one of us is a prisoner. Paul in our epistle reading describes this captivity as well. He says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate to do. That captivity is sin. It is something that we all wrestle with each day of our lives. Martin Luther spoke of this paradox as he says that we are both saint and sinner. This captivity to our human flesh often is frustrating. You can certainly see Paul's frustration. 
each one of us can think of a whole long list of things we want to do, but we end up not doing. By our sins, we are truly prisoners. But we are called prisoners of hope by Zechariah. We are to rejoice because of the coming of our king. The people in Zechariah's days could only look to a future fulfillment of that coming king. Zechariah's chapter 9 is called the returning of the king of Zion. We can look back at Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem in order to offer himself as a sacrifice for our sins. We, even with this hope of forgiveness and eternal life, remain captive to sin our entire life. We continue to sin daily in thought, word, and deed. But with a repentant heart, we are assured that we have the forgiveness of God and we will receive the eternal crown in heaven because of Jesus' sacrifice. That is another paradox. We live in hope because Jesus invited us to come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God tells us in our text, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit in Zechariah. I saw a waterless pit one time. I was uh, serving in at Karshikhanabad, and we took a trip to Bukhara uh, in Uzbekistan in order to get some supplies. And while there, we were able to look into what was called the bug pit. It was a prison of old, and uh, in fact, uh, you can you can read on the screen, you can barely see a, a figurine that is down in, in this pit that they would lure the prisoners. And said the fourth cell and the most notorious or infamous was known as, as uh, uh, Catahona or bug pit. It was six and a half meters deep. It was covered with an iron grill and is accessible only via a long rope. The bug pit was reserved for the least favorite prisoners and inhabitants. Can't imagine being in that waterless pit for any time, let alone we were told that prisoners would be down there and would end up finally dying in that, in that pit. Return to your stronghold, Zechariah urges. Our fortress is our God. It is interesting to note that name, that Zechariah means Yahweh has remembered. Our God has no plan on leaving us lost in our captivity. In fact, we might say we are captive to the hope that God has placed within us through the working of the Holy Spirit. God has provided a way for us to return to a stronghold through his word and sacrament. We are drawn into a hope as we hear God's word in hymns, lessons, and the sermon. And we have become one with that hope as we are baptized in his holy name. And we also feast upon that hope whenever we receive the body and blood of our Savior within Holy Communion. This hope allows us to focus in on Jesus and his forgiveness for us. We are bought with the precious blood of a savior and will belong to him forever. No longer how bumpy the road may be, we have a home with God forever. In him, we do find rest for our souls because we are prisoners of hope. Amen. Now the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts in right minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you ensure that the birds are fed and the lilies clothed in splendor. Deliver us from worry with the consolation that you know what we need and that for Jesus' sake, we are of much more value than they. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, 
Lord, guide the leaders of your church. Give them humble hearts, give them decisive minds, but most importantly, give them vision. Open their eyes to the mission of your church. Open their minds to new ways to accomplish that mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the call process. We pray for the call committee to not grow weary in their work and that the church will be able to see God's hand at work, bringing us a future pastor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our leaders, ruler of the nations, until you at last cut off war horse and chariot forever. Give our nation's leaders wisdom and integrity to preserve peace, promote what is good, and defend against violence and wickedness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for those who protect us. We pray for police officers. We pray for, for military, for, for firefighters, for those in the medical fields, and all those who protect us. Give them your care and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, your son stretched out his hand to heal the sick, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, strength to the infirm, life to the dying, hope to the hopeless, and forgiveness to all. Now let his healing hand reach out and touch and hold those for whom we pray, that we may know his saving love as well. We pray for those who struggle with cancer. Sharon Hunter, George Mate, Linda Bear Rosier, Marcella Jamello, Brenda Garcia, Jeff Gover, Casey Buddy, Lori Check, Debbie Church, Jacqueline Benson, Tracy Gonzalez, Christy, Bob Ruder, Mark and Cindy Hall, Lori De Lamont, Shireen S., Baby Asher, Dennis Ackley, Ken Herman, Marlene Diggins, Bev Jotten, Canty D., and for all those suffering uh, from cancer. We pray for those who have other health issues. George Pickett, Andrea Green, Lois Chick, Kathy Williams, Eunice Serling, Ernie Louis, Sandy Green, Ron Green, Marcel Francisco, Sandra Boyd, Lori Dagson, Lori Parrish, Sharon Maxwell, Tom C., Pat Galt, Karen Berry, Majino Duke, Chris Sandoval, Barbara Geis, Mark Scissor, Lois Belmezzeri, Len Herrera, Kathy Harrington, Linda Hudson, Debbie Pirioski, Amy Chow, Marianne Dandabar, Heather Tuzzi, Sue Cromer, Kimberly Murphy, Bob Sampson, Darlene Nash, Doris Dick Fisher, Dan Foster, Carl Schwann, Ann Colbert, Bob McDowell, Doreen Palmauser, Jim Hamilton, Griffin Guys, Benjamin Dandabar, Peggy Wolf, for Jim Lair, Misty McJunkin, Bill Currier, Maria Seja, and Sam Lamb. We pray that you will relieve their pain according to your goodwill and comfort their distress and give them patience to trust in your promised goodness in all things and wait for your salvation. Granted us and all who call in faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and all other prayers we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now go out into the world as those born of water and the Spirit. Go as those inspired and excited to know that God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. No, in fact, our God sent Jesus into the world to that they might be saved through him. Go as those living in the mystery of the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Go knowing you are loved and are called to love each other. Amen. We sing our closing song.
in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is Jesus, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is that you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.